So look, this is the model. This is something that I discovered, uh, you know, many years ago. Um, after searching for all the different answers, going to doctors, getting tablets, going to help and support groups, listening to the experts at the time, reading the book, what I actually discovered that the mind and the body are actually working separately to who I am consciously. Okay. So if you actually understand that there is a separation, I this is me consciously, me in this present moment, me talking to you, me making all my own decisions, me experiencing life. This is who we are. But behind us is this mind, you know, very sophisticated, intelligent, you know, mind, which controls everything really because it you know we've got 50 to 70 thousand thoughts coming through every single day which are our guide it's, it's controlling my heart rate my body temperature my lung function my digestive system you know we've got something like trillions of blood cells that move around the body but they're all being orchestrated here it was even that discovery that this isn't even me breathing is it you know we all believe that we're breathing but unfortunately it's not us breathing i mean i've got the ability to hold my breath and you know but in 60 seconds my mind and body are going to force me to breathe so so it's this realization that the addiction or the want and the need is coming from something separate to me and the more i started to understand it the logic around it even like my physical body is always sending me messages it's telling me when to eat when to sleep when to rest when see all of the time see my body is sending me consciously you know the body is sending me consciously messages my my mind is sending me loads of thoughts and so so all of a sudden for me to to find the solution i just separated myself i literally not like physically separated but i just removed myself from my thoughts and my feelings and what i actually done was start to question them so i started to question the very thoughts the emotions the feelings Every, you know when you get a hunger feeling all of a sudden you get that that pull towards some food so but that exact feeling was was driving me to smoke to drink to do cocaine to do crack cocaine and so and so what i'd done instead of you know because i've been fighting this you know i've been using willpower i've been doing all of these things but i thought you know what i'm going to stop fighting this i'm going to actually open up a dialogue because when you realize how powerful the mind is and you know and there's not a lot i can do about it. i can't control i can't take over my breathing i can't take over my heart rate and at the same time i can't take over this addiction because I'd allowed the addictive drug or activity, you know, for, for my mind and body to connect with it. And of course, once my mind and body have connected to it, the choice has left me, hasn't it? You know, it was me that put it in, but now it's the choice of the mind and the body. So for me to change it, I had to go and open up a dialogue with the mind. And so I separated myself consciously, I turned around and then I started to open up a dialogue and I started to speak to myself. And I wasn't fine. And every time I opened up a conversation, I would say, thank you. I really appreciate you sending me these messages to smoke or drink, but I want something different. And as I started to speak those words, for the very first time in my life, my emotions started to change. All of a sudden, the thoughts started to go into reverse and straight away i knew i was onto something and just through you know just keep using these self-talk techniques i actually at one point just wrote myself a contract i you know i got a bit of paper you know wrote it down and i, and I wrote to myself and i said from this moment on I'm going to stop smoking, okay? I'm going to stop drinking. And this is the reason why. And I wrote myself this, this letter, this contract, and at the bottom of it, I signed and dated it. And I said, from this, this is it, you know? And then I folded this bit of paper and, and I put it into my pocket. And, and, and that was my contract to myself. Mm. And what I'd done, and, and it's a very, very powerful exercise, it sent a message to the mind. It said that change is on its way, and I consciously, this is what I want. And of course, for that, you know, there's always a period of change, 
but for you know around seven to ten days the body was still craving that you know the drug was still going around the bloodstream so messages were still going to the mind but every time my mind kicked in and said this is what we want this is what we want i would just say thank you but you know look at the contract this isn't what i'm going to do anymore and i'm going to allow these drugs to come out of my system and just through that self-talk and you know it's a bit of a rocky ride for you know seven to ten days but then after 10 days it becomes smooth again yeah. and what you actually do is you return yourself to the person you were before you ever picked up the drugs because through self-talk techniques we actually rewire the mind you know our well, mind is let me just catch, like yeah. this Sorry, that sounds just, really important but i just want to catch something that you're describing yeah. just to clarify it with you like you're talking about okay there's the body there's the mind but there's the self that isn't the body and the mind and maybe yeah. some colleagues who listen to this would be going chris what do you mean by that like am i not myself or like can you say a bit more about that yeah, so, so it's really it's a really really good question and and it's one that everybody asks okay so so we do understand that you know there is our us the conscious self okay so this is you know, this is us in this present moment, okay? But, you know, if we're not this mind, yeah, so this mind, basically what I'm saying is this mind is completely independent to us. I know we are together, but if the mind is sending me 70,000 thoughts every single day, it's got to be sending them to something or someone, and it's sending them to me consciously. Because what I'm doing consciously, and I can't be conscious of 70,000 thoughts, but I'm picking up on some of them because what I'm not consciously thinking about, I'm not consciously thinking how, you know, tough I need to hold this, you know, this bottle of water. So, so what I'm not consciously thinking about, my mind is. So, so there is a separation. There is a separation between who we are consciously and how this mind and body work. Because again, if the body's sending me messages, so so it brings into this question: Well, who are we then? So if if I'm this, if I'm this conscious self, so what am I? Am I a conscious self? Am I a spirit? Am I a soul? What am I? And and you see, the thing is, see, I'm I'm not really a religious person, mm -hmm. but I know what I'm explaining comes very very close. There's a thin line between what I describe and on the other side is religion. Yeah. But I don't know about religion. You know, if you're a religious person, then you need faith in in whatever your religious beliefs are. But I don't. You know, as I said, I'm not a religious person, but I don't know any other way to explain it other than that there we are a conscious self. But what can we be? We can only be a spirit, a soul, the conscious self. But we are not this mind. This is really, really important. We are not this mind and we are not this body. The best way I describe it is, is I say to people, the best way that, to understand it is, you know what the model of a car is? Everybody knows what a car is. Well, we are exactly the same as a car. So, so if you consider we've got a car in front of us and we're looking at the physical body, you know, you, you open up the doors, you look at the interior, you open the bonnet, you look at the engine. We're looking at the physical body, okay? But what we don't see in a car are the computer systems, the electronics. It's the computer systems, electronics, which run everything. They run the pistons, the oil temperature, the braking systems, the light. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever's going on, it's being run by these computer systems. But even with all of that technology and the physical body, that car still can't go anywhere, you know, because you need a what? You need a driver, don't you? Mm. You know, and it's exactly the same with us. You know, you look at me and you're looking at the physical body, but what you don't see is the computer systems, the electronics that run the physical body. But even with that technology and the physical, you still need a what? You need a driver. See, we consciously are the driver of this vehicle, even though the mind and the body are keeping us alive and sending us, you know, guiding us all the time, but we are the decision maker. You see, you know, if I go back into the car, I'm driving down the road, and then all of a sudden the car breaks down, it goes boom, 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 and I go, oh, no, so I jump out the car, you know, I kick the tyre, it doesn't fix it, but what's gone wrong? Is it me, the driver, or is it the, is it the vehicle? Well, it's the vehicle that's gone wrong. Mm. So it's up to me as the driver to either ring a mechanic or fix it myself. Yeah. 
And it's the same thing with us. You know, something's gone wrong with the vehicle. It's either gone wrong with the physical body or it's gone, gone wrong with the computer systems. But it hasn't gone wrong with us consciously. See, we are the driver. It's, it's up to us to be able to fix it. And, you know, this is how I overcome all of these addictions. But the only way that you can do it is you have to separate yourself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once you separate yourself, you know, what you want to call yourself is, you know, exactly. I can only, yeah. Yeah, I can only means... describe it the best way I can. And that's we're either a soul, a spirit, or a conscious self. Yeah. But whatever we are, we are set separate to this vehicle.